It's garden tending day with JJ Heller. How's Yay! it going? So amazing. It's um, <laughs> bountiful and very green, I would yes. say. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so we planted your garden way back, I think it was April. That sounds right. Yeah, April got to come back in May mm -hmm. to check on everything. And uh, we added warm season plants then. We've got tomatoes and peppers, but you still got a load of things from way back when we planted in yeah. April. Yeah. So tell us, we're gonna take a little tour. We can start on this bed. Okay. And then uh, tell us what's gone well, what's been disappointing, the wins, the losses, everything okay. in between. <laughs> Give us the details. All right. Come on. Okay. So on this side, um, I think you told me already one of the, the fails was we lost a squash. Yes. Yeah, squash so casualty. The squash, oh, it's still, the carcass is here. She's still, she's still this reminding us of the failure. <laughs> yes. So that, that's going to go goodbye. Looks like that may have been a squash vine borer or maybe a little disease. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, here is my other interesting fact about my garden. And I think you like noticed this last time. Yeah. I have so many roly polies yeah like they're all in the raised bed and they're all down there yeah um and for a while i thought maybe they were like eating my flowers and actually do they eat marigolds because the marigolds they There's... like imploded from the inside it yeah. was like interesting they had the shoot and they had like the casing for the flower and it was hollow like, okay so they so, got attacked but from within. I, there's still like probably thousands of them in here yeah but all of these plants are still so we might want to treat that either with like some, I try not to do treatment, but if it's that bad, maybe with some diatomaceous earth or even some sluggo might dry up the area. We'll look at the okay. sluggo and see if that would help. Okay. Cool. But yes, roly polies, fun to collect those children. Yeah. Not as fun to have in the garden. Yeah. Well, I think, do they, do they aerate the soil I don't, at all? Perhaps, but I wouldn't see them as a beneficial. Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> they, right, they so love it here. Really polly, like, but a lot of your garden looks very like untouched totally. in terms of pets, which yes. is amazing. The, so tell us more of what's growing in here. Yeah. Like I've been really shocked how long the kale has lasted. Yeah. I mean, I feel like it's kind of on its last legs, but it was prolific. Like I have given many bouquets of kale to my neighbors, like to the people at the gym and everybody's like, they're so beautiful. Cause they kind of, you know, when you carry them it's together, like yeah, it's yeah. like a flower arrangement that you can eat. Yeah. And so I've made lots of kale chips with awesome. my little Trader Joe's barbecue seasoning. Love it. So good. Oh, I gotta try that. I, I hope done it's that. so good. Um, um, you know what I just started doing with my kale? What's that? Green juice. You told me about that. You like dehydrate it, right? So I was making smoothies and then just recently I started just making straight juice. Have you oh, tried it? No. Okay, so I cut the, do you have like a high speed blender? Yes. Okay, so I cut the leaves like this. I take the stem out because the roughage is going to get shredded up anyway. Just the leaves and I'll take about like four cups of leaves, okay? I stick it in a Vitamix. What kind of high speed blender do you have? Uh, like a ninja? Yeah. Okay, so the Ninja might be, you'd have to do maybe smaller amounts because it's like that one cup, right? Yeah. Okay, so you do smaller amounts, but I just do leaves. I'll squeeze a whole lemon and then I'll put some like ginger in there, some chopped ginger. Uh, you could do something else like cucumber and stuff, but I just have mostly have kale. Uh, add a lot of water, blend it high speed, and then strain it. Put it over ice. It's like the perfect afternoon pick me up. Yeah, and you're like, I'm drinking green stuff. It must be good for me, right? Because <laughs> uh, you and I have the same problem, which is too a lot of kale. Yeah. Not too much, but a lot. Yeah, a yes. lot. Okay, so kale, the Swiss chard, have you used this at all? A little bit, uh huh. Um, it's mostly decorative. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> My family's just not a big fan of Swiss chard. Yeah. Um, but again, it's like I've given a lot of it away. Um, yeah. Looks beautiful. Yeah, it's kind of a nice backdrop. It is a nice it backdrop. So tall. You could have less though, and we can talk about that today yeah. if you want to take some out. That happens to me sometimes where I get overzealous at the beginning of the season when the plants are this big. Yeah, and then you get into the season, you're like, I didn't need that much. Yeah. <laughs> so I probably did that to you because I think we brought in like six plants on each side. Yes. Um, but they definitely look beautiful. What about the peppers? Have you gotten any yet? The plants okay. look nice and um, tall. Um, we've gotten. One little red one that okay. was actually delicious, and oh, then like a big a little, green one. Oh yeah, here's one I little haven't. spicy one. Look at that. <laughs> and it looks like you've got the start. This is going to be a really prolific plant once it goes. See all these oh, little yeah. buds. Uh -huh. So probably in the next month, you're going to have 
tons of peppers on these plants, which is really fun. All right, so tell us now about your tomato arch, which is looking so lovely. Yes, they're doing very well. We've had a few red ripe tomatoes that have been, honestly, I'm not even exaggerating, like the best tomatoes oh, I've like ever eaten in my entire life. Are you serious? Like the best tomato yes. you've ever eaten? Yes, like my family was literally like shocked, like, Oh my goodness. And these are the um, brandy wine tomatoes? Yes. Wow. I'm a so fan. Good. Big fan, big fan. And it makes such a difference that you get to like cut it and then eat it, right? Yes. No okay, waiting. But here's my question. Okay. So like this one, it has this big old bug hole yeah. right here. Mm -hmm. So first, do I just pick this and be done with it? So you could. That There might be a little caterpillar in there or it might not. You never know. For me, what I do is just get a little bit of like garlic oil and just wash it with my hand. You okay. can spray it too, but I'll just get like a little garlic oil with some water, wash it, and then that's usually gonna keep the pests from coming back onto the tomato oh. while it lays there. Okay. Um, it's That one is a little too green to take off in right. terms of it actually yeah. ripening. Oh, it's, I was just thinking I would take it off and throw it out. Yeah, it may, I don't know. For me, I'm always like, you never know. And I can cut around something and make some tomato soup or okay. salsa or yeah. something. But if it bothers you, absolutely go for it. You can take it off. I mean, obviously you've got a lot of other tomatoes that are on the vine. Uh, but for me, I usually just, if I can tell pests are coming around, yeah. I'll just put a little bit of coating of garlic okay. there yeah. and then let it go. Okay. Because, yeah, we saw this and then we started to get nervous. And so the internet was like, buy jewelry bags and put them around the tomatoes. <laughs> so on this side over here. I love it. We have these. Yeah. Um, they're protected, but all of these ones are starting to get smushed. Yeah, they're um, a little too tight on there. Those yeah. tomatoes are like, you're caging me in. <laughs> okay, now this side is kind of a replication of the other side, except you've got some mambo jumbo Thai basil yes. here. Man, it smells so good. You need to make so some curry. Good. Yeah, you can make curry. You can also, take these off. These will store really well for pesto through the winter. Oh, Thai basil pesto. Yes. And it's so nice. It's got a, a little bit extra spice to okay. it. So if I were you with all the, in these plants, we just saw these in Ellie's garden last week. Yeah. I mean, these will get so tall. And so I would come in if you have some extra, you know, you're not busy, right? You have nothing to do. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. So when you have nothing to do, um, or if your kids are like mom or bored, then you're going to, you could just cut these, strip the leaves, you make the pesto and then put it in little ice cubes and freeze it. Cool. And then uh, just put it into like a freezer bag through the winter. And then every, any night you want, Pot, uh, pesto for your pasta. Okay. You just got it saved up. Awesome. And now is like the time to do it because okay. you know once these start to flower like this, yeah. the, the flavor changes. Okay, that's what that was my question because I know with the lettuce, once they start to bolt and flower, you said same that the, thing. Okay. Yeah. So, so even this. on this kind too. Yeah. Okay. So we want to like, and we'll work on this today, but you'd want to like prune this back so that you don't get the flower. Okay. You're gonna have the best flavor out of a leaf before it goes to flower. Great. Okay. Yep. I also wanted to, uh, like this, the Thai basil to uh -huh. me, it has like a little bit of licorice Yes, flavor. yeah. Uh, compared to the sweet and basil. And you like this one better? Like, no, I like them both. Yeah. Just for different, yeah. different things. This but. One's, but this one is a great one for, for making some pesto. You'll lose a little bit of that licorice as you make it into the, the dish. Gotcha. So, awesome. Okay, and then... We do have some, we discovered a bell pepper here. Yeah. Um, it looks like we, these pepper plants also like the ones over there need a little bit of support. Okay. So we'll make a plan for that. And then uh, I heard you had to sacrifice a kale back I did. here There's or two or three. Big empty spot. Yeah. So we there can now. fill that up this morning and then let us show the people your sage. Okay. Yes. I mean, what, what this. in the world? So are you yes. going to be a sage farmer or what? I guess. This I plant now. loves you. <laughs> now remind me, is this one that we cut back that was here last year? Oh, uh, we must have. I feel like when we came, remember you had a couple of like really mature plants? Yes. And I wonder if this is one of the ones we cut yeah. back. If so, is this like the best example of a perennial herb or oh what? Gosh. Like it just goes and goes and goes. So we're going to do a major harvest. I know how you love giving plants and gifts to your yes. friends and neighbors. So. We're going to prep you for a sage, Perfect. sage present giving. <laughs> also, um, I, I cut a bit of this and put it in a little vase uh -huh. on my kitchen table, probably like three weeks ago. And it's yeah. still, oh, it's still alive. Okay. And doesn't it smell? <gasps> yeah. I love the yeah. smell of this. Like this is a great thing to put in 
like a little guest bathroom or something yeah, like that. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, the, the smell is so, so pungent. Okay. Then we started with a loss. We're going to end yes. with a loss. And there's a theme here, right? Oh, look at this pepper. There's another pepper. We, um, we're losing the same kind of plant, aren't yes. we? And what is it? This is a yellow squash. Yeah. I actually, I mean, I ate two of them. Nice. And, but now, like she's, this. Yeah, it's just. She's tired. This. The squash vine borer is a beast. Uh -huh. And uh, uh -huh. next year, if you are interested in doing squash again, what we can do is um, stake it and then you can also wrap around it to protect it. But okay. it is, it's just one part of growing squash. For me, I just know when I plant a squash, it's on like a ticking time bomb. Okay. I'll get as much squash as I can. And as soon as I see that happening, she's okay. out. All right. So just and then, nothing you did wrong. Just the squash vine borers. Okay. They just know how to find the squash. Yeah. How do they do that? <laughs> they're like flying around your neighborhood, you know, crawling through your grass. And then they're like, Oh, yeah. JJ planted a squash. Mm -hmm. We're ready. It's crazy. Um, so then will we cut it or pull it? I am probably going to pull it. I'll show you. I'll do it right now. Okay. okay. So we'll just pull it. You can see it's so brittle. It just yeah. broke off. So we'll take it out, get rid of it. And then now we have a new place to, to do some more planting, okay. which is great. So goodbye squash. See you later. Bye. Thanks for Mwah. two, two squash. <laughs> this is why I don't plant a lot of squash. Oftentimes it is not worth it. Okay, last but not least, give us a little tour of your gorgeous little uh, native plant and pollinator garden. I think yes. it looks so great. All right, here she is. I see a like, okay. So Nicole just told me that this one is over for the season. Yeah, this is borage, and borage is really more of a cool season. So this was in your okay. in your pollinator garden uh, wild wildflower packet, which is great. Yeah. Well, borage is loved by the bees. It's a wonderful oh, yeah. plant. So we'll just take it out, and most likely these little flower heads already drop seeds. Okay. And you're going to get more of these this time next year. Great. So, yeah, tell us what else you got. Okay, um, I don't know the names of all these things, but here's more sage. Yeah. She is so happy here in the garden. Um, this is oregano over here, and it's like... Oh, and it's flowering. It's flowering. It so, looks great. Yeah, it's pretty, and it smells good, but probably won't eat it anymore. Is that yeah. right? You will can it be cut better? it back, and it will still have good flavor. Oh, okay. Um, but the bees do... We can see a bee on here right now. Oh, see? yeah. They love oregano flowers. Yay. It's hilarious, but it's like they're... We plant all these things for the bees, and we're like, oh, we could have just given them oregano. Wow. It's amazing. I love that. We've got this gorgeous echinacea. This is a perennial that we plant. I think these are the plants we brought in in the spring. This is one of my favorites. This is called Anna's Hyssop. We can cut these back, and you'll get some good, fresh purple Ooh, okay. blooms. The hummingbirds love this one. Yes. I have found, you know, more and more, I, I've even watching in my own garden, and Plants that have the spiked flower, bees and butterflies, all kinds of insects tend to just love a spike flower. Wow. Uh, I get more insects on my anise hyssop than any other plant, even milkweed. Things Interesting. Like that. Yeah. Um, the snapdragons are still holding on, which is amazing. Yes. And then you've also got this thyme here, which looks awesome. And uh, and I was showing you earlier about this magical plant called Coreopsis. This yeah. is one of my first successful plants. And come here, I'm gonna sh let's see if we can show them. So I was sharing with you how these seeds right here, this is produced by a flower head. So grab those with your hands, JJ, and we'll show everybody how they work. So right there is probably five, six, seven seeds. These little, the black oh, tough ones are the okay. seeds. And I was telling you, I shared um, one of my first plants that was so successful was this. I was in Dallas. It was like 115 degrees in July. And my sister's neighbor had a yard filled with these. It was like a rock garden with all these flowers. It was so lovely. And I leaned over the gate and I was like, what plants is that? And she grabbed a brown bag and handed it to me and said, here's some seeds. And it was because these seeds are so easy to gather. So I took them home to Houston, planted them in my front yard. Within 50 days, had blooms like this, and did the same thing for my whole street, wow. all my neighbors who asked. And within a year or two, you'd walk down our street and there'd be orange coreopsis everywhere. Amazing. It is just the plant that keeps on giving. It just loves, loves, loves to grow and produces an enormous amount of prolific seeds. So. Love it. Now, are they all orange? They uh, they do have, coreopsis does, you can get it in other colors, but this is the one 
that I've had the most. I think okay. this is probably like the original. The mid, yeah, I don't know that for one. sure, but yeah. Um, yeah, because you'd probably, it would be nice to have it in like pink or white, right? It'd be yeah. so pretty. Well, and so would I like, this one looks done. Yeah. Would I cut it here? If you the... don't want any more seed, yes, you okay. could cut it there. If you want it to go to seed, you're just literally going to let it stay there and do its thing. See, this one is a great example of how it's on its way to seed. Oh, yeah. So you can see the bloom has disappeared at this point and then all that's left. And so in just like maybe a week or so, even those little yellow blooms are going to shrivel and then all you'll be left are these black seeds. Pretty crazy, right? Amazing. It is, yeah. So if you, like, it's a fun teacher gift, a fun neighbor gift, like put it in a little seed packet yeah. and say like wildflowers from JJ's garden. Oh, like that. Cool. It's really fun. And then um, it's like a way to, you know, share because literally they're going to send you pictures a year or two from now and be like, yeah. your flowers are growing in my garden. So it's a fail proof one. I feel like sometimes we give people seeds yeah. and uh, it's disappointing. <laughs> right. <laughs> this one is not. Um, all right. Well, what an incredible job you have done. The garden is just literally packed. Now we're going to get in there and do some tending. Great. We're going to um, prune a lot of your greens, give you tons of big harvest. We're going to get this tomato onto the arch trellis. Okay. Talk about supporting these peppers. We'll do some harvest, test out your carrots, um, deadhead a little bit of these flowers, and then you're going to be good to go. We're going to add some seeds too. Yay! For, we have like six, we have like 75 days left before we hit frost. Wow. So we still have tons of time to okay. grow beans and um, even like cucumbers, some things like that. So. I would like cucumbers. All right. Well, we're going to try to make it happen. Okay. All right. Let's get started. Thank you for giving us the tour. And um, thank you guys for watching. I hope this inspires you of what's possible. JJ, I think, has a perfect size garden. It's for a busy woman. She's a professional. She's a singer, songwriter. She has two daughters. She's a busy lady. And she's able to maintain a garden this size in such a great way. Mm -hmm. And so I hope this inspires you that this is a great garden. You can stick right alongside your back wall. Yes. And look, she's still, it's still in shade even in midday or mid morning. And um, it's still growing great. Yeah. So no excuses. And okay, it's guys. really pretty. It's definitely very pretty. All right, let's get started. Thanks for watching. See you later.